We're on lesson two of chapter nine, which is linear best fit models. First, we're gonna observe a pattern, then we're gonna assess the line of best fit, and then we're gonna write an equation for the line of best fit. We're still working with scatter plots in this lesson, and when we do, and remember, a scatter plot can show a relationship between two different data sets. So as far as like the number of hours you study and your semester grade, this is showing a positive relationship between those data sets. And that's what we look for first, a strong positive relationship, you could say. Now we're going to focus on whether it's linear or nonlinear. Remember, a linear relationship is going to follow a lined path. A nonlinear relationship would follow more of a curved path or a curved path that kind of looks like this or like that. In this case, it's pretty safe to say that this is following a linear path. Although if we are getting technical, the highest you can get for your semester grade is 100. So if you do study eight, nine, 10 hours, it's actually gonna flatten out here, which would make it nonlinear. But for the points that they were showing us here, this would make quite a linear graph. A couple words we're gonna learn here. Clustering is one of them. Clustering is when points on a scatter plot are grouped in one part of the graph. So in this case, I would call this area clustering. That means we had a lot of students that only studied for one, maybe two hours, and they generally got the same grade. Outliers are something else. Outliers are points on a scattered plot that do not fit well with the correlation. For example, this six hours of study time doesn't fit very well. It seems like a lot of people that were studying for five, six, and seven hours were getting pretty good grades. This person who studied for six hours got a little bit of a bad grade. Maybe they just had a bad day. Maybe they didn't get a lot of sleep that night. That could maybe be the outlier, why that's down there. So you usually have to kind of try to find an explanation of why it doesn't fit. So let's look at this scatter plot. This one's comparing temperatures and degrees Fahrenheit and number of hand warmers sold. So we're going to describe this pattern. Remember, we're going to look for the type of relationship and whether it's linear or not. Well, this looks like a negative relationship. As the temperature goes up, people don't need to buy as many hand warmers. So there's going to be fewer of them sold. So we'll say negative. And we're going to say this is pretty strong. It, they, they are all following that line pretty closely. Now we need to determine whether it's linear or not. And this is kind of like that one with the test scores, where the test score can only go to 100. Well, you can only actually sell zero hand warmers. You can't sell negative. So what's going to happen to this graph, it's going to kind of start out linear, but then it tails off like this and becomes kind of a curved line. So we're actually going to say nonlinear. Now if we're going to look for some clustering, I would say these ones are so close together I can't really tell them apart. So that's a very good sign of clustering. So if we're going to say that, we would say at 10 degrees Fahrenheit there would be some clustering. So there must have been a lot of days around 10 degrees Fahrenheit where people were buying pretty much the same amount. If we're looking for outliers then, I would say this one doesn't really match with the data set. If we're going to explain that one, I guess you could say maybe there was an outdoor event when it was a 30 degree day, which makes people still want to buy a lot of hand warmers, even though it wasn't as cold as the other days. So we would say 30 degrees Fahrenheit and 60 hand warmers. That would be our outlier. Now we can assess the line of best fit. So we worked on this a little bit with scatter plots. A line of best fit is going to create the pattern and split the data evenly. So you're going to try to get as many dots on the top as you do on the bottom. Now we're going to see which line of best fit works better with the graph that it's given. Graph A splits the data like this. Graph B also splits this negative relationship. The key to this one really is which one is a stronger correlation. Here I see that these dots are, don't get too far away from that line of best fit. This is probably the farthest one away and it's not that far even. However, these ones are all pretty far away on the outside here meaning that this is a weaker negative. And that tells me that graph A is a better line of best fit because it matches for the data pretty well. So we'll say graph A. Now we're gonna write an equation for a line of best fit. So it says estimate an equation for the line of best fit and tell what the slope and y intercept mean in terms of data that it models. So this is our chance to create a line of best fit. We have this data here and it looks like a negative correlation. It's number of missed classes and exam score. So the more classes you miss, the lower your exam score is gonna be, it looks like, for the most part. If I'm gonna draw this line, I could start here, and it looks like I'm kinda of keeping the data above and below. We can actually try to count that. And this would put about the same amount above and below my line. Now here comes the fun part. We're going to estimate an equation. That means it's not going to be an exact equation. 
Then we're going to do a lot of the things that we did last chapter, where we're going to look for the slope, which is the rise over run. And we'll also look for the y-intercept, which is when x equals 0. So first, what is our y-intercept? Well, when x equals 0, y equals, it looks like, 93. So the y-intercept equals 93. And we can use this to find our slope. So we're at 0 and 93. Now let's see if we could find a spot on the line that we can use to measure. So try to find something that matches up pretty well with the graph here. Uh, for example, here looks like a pretty good spot. I see that the number of missed classes is 20 and that the exam score looks to be about 40. So let's look at our rise over run here. So our run, for example, went from 0 to 20. That's the change in x. So that would be a run of 20. The rise, I went from 93 down to 40. So that would be negative 53 over 20. And since that's a really messy fraction, let's actually turn that into a decimal. Our slope then would be negative 2.65, and that's a lot better. So if we're going to write out our slope-intercept form equation, y equals mx plus b, this is m, this is b, so it would be y equals negative 2.65 times x plus 93. So what does the slope mean? Well, that means for every class that you skip, you can expect a negative 2.65% drop in your exam score. And obviously, that's not always going to be the case. Some people fare better than others, as we can see. So you might do better than that. You might do worse than that. And the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So that means when your number of missed classes is 0, you can expect about a 93% on your exam score.